gentlemen, let's give it up for our next comic, Horatio Ramirez. Please! <laughs> This hour is brought to you by uh, whatever, which is uh, funny because whenever I'm in front of an audience that listens, they all have the same reaction of, oh, I thought it was a black guy. <laughs> nope, stocky Mexican. That's, that's what it is. That's what it is. Give it for Oscar, man. He did an awesome job up here. Uh, Oscar was talking about Little Village. That's actually where uh, the neighborhood I grew up in. Uh, very, very interesting. Uh, since Oscar was able to tell uh, gangbanging jokes and didn't get shot, I'm assuming you guys are all not gangbangers, so that's good. <laughs> so I feel, I feel safe to proceed ahead. Because, like, uh, Spanish is my first language, right? So, I, like, all I spoke at home was Spanish. Like, the way I learned my English was from the television. So, like, the first words I ever said in English were, You're next on the price is right, come on down! <laughs> all right. Which didn't exactly make me popular with the gangbangers in my neighborhood because they're like, hey Richard, we're gonna throw down with some kings, man, you down? I was like, you mean we're gonna engage these gentlemen in a, in a turf war? They're like, man, just go home. Go home. Go home. Go home. But uh, yeah, no, my, my neighborhood gang was, uh, was the 2 6, I guess because they're by 26th Street, so they know numbers. So congrats to them. You know. We're by 26th Street, let's go with those numbers. Let's go with the one thing I didn't get about the, the guys in my neighborhood though was that like all of them, they all drove like old police cars that they got at auctions. It's always like Chevy Caprices and, and Crown Vicks. How did that work out? Were they like, you know, riding in the backseat of the car one day going, hey man, when we went over that, that speed bump, I didn't really feel it, did you? When I get out of here, I'm getting one of these, man. That's a smooth ride. It's really cool. But I'm also a product of Chicago Public Schools, so thank you. Thanks for that. Yeah, thank you, thank you. I dressed myself, it's all good. Um, no, I'm, I'm 37 now, right? But like a couple years ago, I ran into an old classmate of mine. Uh, we went to grade school together, and he goes, man, that's crazy, man. He's like, we're 35 now, man. Halfway to 40. <laughs> it's like, nah, dude, that's, that's halfway to 70. <laughs> You guys will be happy though, he's a, he's a math teacher now at our old school, so things worked out for him, he's okay. He's doing all right, not doing too bad. Um, I, uh, you know, I, I did go to, to, to college, so I, I got some student loans. Uh, who's, who's got some student loan debt here? All right, I can tell, people are drinking water, so it's all right, it's okay. <laughs> I went to uh, Columbia College for radio broadcasting, so I actually you know, managed to go there and, and, and get into the field. But like a lot of my classmates, they, uh, they didn't get into radio. They all uh, got into law enforcement. So there's like a ton of Chicago cops now. And you'll know my classmates, because they'll pull you over and they'll be like, uh, this ticket is brought to you by the Department of Revenue. <laughs> the meeting I'm about to administer is courtesy of my nightstick. <laughs> Very well spoken people. But uh, yeah, accruing student loan debt, it's, it's kind of difficult though, because for me, I kind of felt like uh, college tuition was a lot like prison rape, where I had like no choice but to take it. <laughs> I really did. And now I get these letters in the mail, right, where it says like, Dear alumni, would you like to donate? To me, that's like if you were in jail and your old cellmate writes you and he goes, Remember when I used to hold you in the shower against your will? You want to do that again? <laughs> what do you say? What do you say? Anyway, you guys, um, I'm, a, I'm a huge Batman fan. You guys like Batman here? Yeah. yeah. For as much of a Batman fan as I am, I've come to the realization that I'm the complete opposite of Batman. Because, like, Batman's parents were killed when he was a kid. Mine are still alive. Batman has a lot of money. I'm really poor. Batman fights crime. I commit crime. <laughs> So I'm the complete opposite of Batman, you guys. It sucks. It sucks. I'll, I'll never be like him. It'll be all right. Anyway, um, what else can I tell you about myself? But yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a Southwest Sider. So uh, any people by by like Midway Airport? I'm asking in case my car gets towed and I need a ride. So that's the only reason why I want to know. Just in case. Thank you. Thank you, Gia. Thank you so much. I, I appreciate it. I appreciate it. But yeah, now, now that I'm 37, though, I've realized that in my life, uh, uh, I've gone through what I like to, to call the three stages of Disney. 
The first stage is when you're a teenager, right? And uh, yeah, you got your first girlfriend. And in your mind, you know, everything's like, Oh, I can't wait to have a girl that wants to commit to me forever. Oh, if I had a girlfriend, I'd never cheat on her. Oh, all I want to do is hold hands. Sex is overrated. Oh. So then eventually you do have sex. And then you go through what I like to call the second phase, which is the goofy phase. Where it's like you spend all your time with her, duh, I just want to be with you all the time. <laughs> your friends who you haven't seen in a while, they're like, hey, Horatio, guys night out. Duh, I can't, fellas. My girlfriend wants to watch movies tonight. <laughs> and then eventually you get sick and tired of each other and you break up and she leaves you in a uh, sad mess. And uh, you go through the third phase, which is the Donald Duck phase, which is when you then start uh, meeting new women and they're like, hey, you're kind of funny, let's go out sometime. And you're just like, <laughs> so what I'm saying is that I am now an old bitter duck. That's what I'm saying. Anyway, guys. So, uh, so gay marriage went through. Huh? Let's get it up for that. Huh? Love, love, love rules and stuff. I'm gonna tell you this not because I'm trying to impress you, but my brother is gay. He is. I had a friend of mine who goes, "Ah, oh, your brother's doing it to be cool," and I'm like, "No, my brother loves dick. He does." <laughs> I mean, unless he's playing a joke on me, he is really committing to this joke. He's got a grinder account. And I'm like, oh, I get it. One of these days he's gonna go, nah, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> now, the thing with my brother, though, is that, like, since he was a kid, like, I could tell that he was gay, right? Because he, like, used to jump rope with the girls, play with dolls, things like that, you know? So, the, the one thing that I didn't get, especially growing up in Little Village, was why, like, a lot of the older men in the neighborhood would buy my brother uh, ice cream, specifically Rocket Pops, but just to watch him eat them. Nothing else. Nothing else. Because I'm like, how do I get on this free ice cream racket? What do I got to do? I like ice cream. But when my brother turned 21, right, he decided to come out. And I'll never forget how he did it. He called me into his room and he goes, hey brother, um, come in, have a seat. I got something to tell you. Uh, I don't know how I'm going to say this, but uh, I'm gay. And I was like, okay, that's cool. That's cool. Um, why don't you have a seat? I got something to tell you. I don't know how I'm going to tell you this, but um, I'm fat. Now that we pointed the obvious to each other, why don't I buy you a rocket pop? Maybe say, let's talk for a rocket pop. Come on. Me and you. Me and you. You guys are cool. These, you guys are more accepting. I, I told this joke in front of a room full of Palestinians. <laughs> The women kind of laughed. The guys all kind of gave me the same look, and it was like, uh, your brother, uh, you kill him, right? <laughs> you chop off your brother's head? He's no longer having homosexuality? If you want, I kill your brother for you. Said, no, that's all right. It's all right. Got it under control, man. Got it under control. No. And I mean, it's crazy that this country can be so homophobic, especially when you think about this. We have Uncle Sam, right? There's, he doesn't have a wife, he dresses flamboyantly, and he's going around saying to other men, I want you. <laughs> Makes no damn sense. Thank you, Soli, I appreciate that. I hope your laugh's being recorded by that camera. This, this title sound a lot more successful. Thank you, there it is right there. I'll pause for editing. This is live, what? No way, no way. Yeah, so, um, I, I work in, in hip hop radio, which also makes it interesting because uh, uh, my coworkers, are, I, I mentioned to one guy that, that I have a gay brother, and he goes, Man, that's crazy, your brother's a fag. And I was like, I guess, I don't know. And he's like, That's crazy, man. He's like, One time this guy came up to me and he goes, I'll give you $70 if you let me suck your dick. And I was like, What? He's like, Yeah. He's like, He offered me $70. I was like, Man, that's crazy. What'd you do with the $70? <laughs> Because that is a great deal. That is the definition of a win-win. If I could make $70 for that, my student loans would be paid off, and I'd be driving a much better car. I'd be standing outside this bowling alley right now like a carnival barber going, Stop right up, stop right up, my neck for $70. You want the pretty lips. Win the lady a little dolly. $70. $70. 
million dollars. I tell you, I tell you. Um, but before I worked in hip hop radio, I worked in, in country radio. And I gotta tell you guys, uh, country listeners have a reputation for being stupid. And uh, it's true. It's absolutely true. I had this guy say this to me, and I'll never forget it. He goes, dude, I got a four-year-old daughter. I ain't seen her in five years. <laughs> I said this joke in front of a room full of doctors and this Indian lady in front of me. She's like, well, I think technically he could have. I'm like, no! Four years and nine months does not equal five years. Looking at the ultrasound does not count. Doesn't. All right, last thing I'll leave you guys with is, um, who here has, uh, remembers on uh, March 14th, 314, there's two things that were being observed that day. Who, who can tell me what they were? Pi day is one, very good, it's a math thing. And then the other one, I know you want to say, Joe. You want me to say it? Say it. Steak and politically correct oral homage or blowjob day. Very good, steak and blowjob day. So for, for those of you who don't know what it is, uh, Valentine's Day, 214, that's for the ladies. A month later, 314 is supposed to be for the guys, steak and blowjob day, right? I got a text message from a friend of mine, and she goes, hey, it's steak and blowjob day, and I'm like, that's awesome. Are you texting to help me celebrate? She goes, no, I'm just informing you. <laughs> And I was like, that's mean. <laughs> Do you also let orphans know when it's Mother's Day? <laughs> anyway, guys, that's my time. Uh, let me bring both of